Welcome to the Essentially You podcast. Rachel Fryman, how are you doing today, girl? I am so excited to be here with you. This is going to be a ton of fun. Yes, it is. We are talking about diets. And the truth is, they're not sustainable, right? You and I both know that. And I know that you've been navigating this with so many women over the years and really teaching them how to love eating, but also get the results that they want. And so before we get into this and we talk a little bit about why they are never sustainable, because I know some women are still trying some things out and it's not working, (laughs) let's get clarity there. But before we do that, Rachel, I would love for you to just paint why, kind of that defining moment for you when you decided that this was the work you wanted to do, like you wanted to become, you know, the CEO of MindStrong Fitness. What was that moment for you? Oh man, it was one of those moments that you will never forget because it was so crystal clear. I was actually a middle school music teacher, so <laughs> which is so That's far a big from fitness, right? Yeah. <laughs> big deviation, big big fork in the road. But the path that makes sense is the fact that I started going to the gym myself just as a release, right? When you teach middle school, there's there's a lot built up behind that, and I just started going to the gym as my own peace of mind at the end of the day. And after a couple of years of doing that, you know, people start to see the difference in your body. They start to talk to you about it. And I heard the same thing from a lot of teachers, just questions like, I wish I could get in shape, but I don't know what to do. Or I feel intimidated by the gym or nutrition is so confusing because you Google weight loss and you get 5,000 different answers. So it happened very organically. I just started taking friends with me to the gym and showing them like, here's some exercises you can do. Here's some things you can do with your nutrition. And for me, the pinpoint defining moment was the feedback I started hearing because it had nothing to do with what their bodies looked like. I heard things like, I am showing up as a better teacher for my students. I am showing up as a better spouse, a better partner, a better parent because of the way that they felt about themselves. And that was such a light bulb moment for me of just, this is what I was put on earth to do. Like I know at my core, I'm always going to be a teacher, but I am here to help people just reignite that spark that goes out after years and years and years of putting everyone else first. And I started MindStrong to teach what I call teach truth in a very confusing industry that nutrition and fitness, these are learnable skills, right? We can learn to ride a bike, we can learn to sew, and we can learn nutrition and fitness as skills, but most companies don't want you to learn that. They want you to buy their products. But the teacher in me needs to like shout that from the rooftops. that <laughs> These are things we can learn. And I started my entire company around that idea. Mm, I love that so much. And, you know, I love that kind of defining kind of recognition of when women were really focusing on how to take care of their bodies and listening to their bodies, that intuition, it wasn't just the weight. It was, you know, how else they were feeling, how else things were transforming in their life. You know, there's so many side benefits when we really dial in what's the right thing for us and weight just being one of those side benefits in particular. Okay. I want to address the big elephant in the room, and that is why diets will never be sustainable for any of us, because I know that there are still some of us that are holding on to that dogma that they are to some degree. Absolutely. And there's more than some of us. Most of us are, right? Most of us, we believe the reason we haven't lost weight is because we haven't found the diet that works for us yet. And One of the first exercises that I do with people, whether it's in social media or we do this in my book coming out, the first thing that we need to get clear on is that even if you've tried 50 or 100 or 200 diets, at their core, every quote unquote diet is the same diet. If you made a list, and we actually do this in my book, we go through and we make a list of every diet you've tried before, and you're going to see that at their root, they are based around this idea of telling you what you quote unquote can or can't eat. And this comes down to human psychology, right? Freud discovered the pleasure principle where our brains will always avoid pain and seek pleasure, but first and foremost, we will always avoid pain. And restriction is one of the biggest forms of pain for our bodies. Our bodies, our minds, we hate restriction. So if you walk around with horse blinders on saying, I can't eat this, I can't eat this, I can't eat this. Oh, this is allowed, but I can't eat this. You might have the willpower of a Navy SEAL and maybe you'll last for three months, six months. But at some point, not only are you going to cave, but you're going to binge eat. And we've all been on that roller coaster. We're so quote unquote good for so long. And then the second we have one slice of pizza or one sexy brownie, (laughs) then we just go off. It's like, well, I had one. I may as well have six because we've been trying to live in a state of restriction. And what we need to get crystal clear on first and foremost is that 
every diet out there, whether it's low carb, whether it's low fat, whether it's a point system, whether it's a shake system, if the basis of that diet is telling you what you can or can't eat, it is not going to last. Science has proven that willpower is an exhaustible resource. You might have more of it than I do, but at some point it's going to run out and you're going to binge and you're going to cave. And the key to this, the way that we truly make it a sustainable lifestyle, not just another fad diet, is by learning to approach nutrition, as I said before, as a skill, as a way where no food is labeled good or bad, where you can still have those sexy brownies as part of your weight loss plan. It's not a cheat food. It's not a binge food. It's not a weekend only food. It fits into your weight loss plan. So there's no more can or can't eat. Hmm. I want to just like literally second all of that because I do have some serious willpower, definitely more than my husband does. <laughs> and one of the things I've always attributed myself on is my discipline and my willpower. But I know for a fact that it will only take you so far. You could be the most disciplined, the most strict, the most focused, but at some point it's going to fall off the rails. And 100%. I have been there myself. And also, I just want to just speak into why Rachel is saying the sexy brownies. I know we know that there's several of us here listening to this episode, including myself. You know, we're having this conversation and I have Hajimoto's thyroiditis and there are just certain foods that are just off my list that are allergens. And my husband and I, we have this really sexy brownie recipe that is gluten-free, dairy-free, all the, you know, and still there's some delicious, yummy components. It's not for every day. I'm not eating the sexy brownies every day, but... But it allows for us to do the thing that we do, eat the healthy way that we eat, and we get those little treats is what really what you're saying, which makes things more sustainable. Is that kind of the direction we're going here? Absolutely. So in full disclosure, I have two loves in my life, my puppy yes. and Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> and and so what kind of me- puppy do you have? Oh, she is a mix. Her name is Charlie and she is just, she's an angel on earth. (laughs) Oh, I love her name, Charlie. And Krispy Kreme Donuts. Okay. And Krispy Kreme Donuts. So for me, you know, I always tell people if health and fitness came down to a choice of give up Krispy Kremes or be a fitness pro, it's not a contest. I'm choosing Krispy Kremes all day, every day. So whether it's Krispy Kremes or if you have dietary restrictions or even just dietary preferences, the point behind it is exactly what you're saying. It's not something you're going to do every day, but it's not about restriction. It's not about these quote unquote cheat foods. It's about how do I fit my foods in, whether your foods are donuts or brownies or pizza or whatever that thing is that you right now consider a bad food. How do we change that mindset? How do we heal that relationship with food where if you choose to have it once in a while, you can, and it doesn't have to be this big over the top binge because it's just something that fits into your weight loss plan. Mm, I love that. So Rachel, let's talk a little bit about the mindset because you're right. Absolutely. Restriction is the thing for so many people. You know, the willpower gives, we feel so much shame and blame when we mess up, right? When we veil ourselves, I see it all the time where women are just like, I failed. And I'm just like, guess what? Tomorrow's another day. Like, and it's not about failure. Every day we get many, many opportunities to make many decisions about what we put into our bodies. You know, we vote with our fork. And so talk to me, you know, as we're navigating this terrain of like figuring out what's the right thing for us? What's the right thing for me? Because what's right for me isn't going to be right for you, you know, based on a lot of other factors. But how can I shift my mindset where, you know, I don't villainize these foods necessarily. Yes, maybe they're not phenomenal for my body working optimally. Certain foods, maybe that's the case for certain people. And when I don't eat those, I feel super great. But I also want my treats, my healthy treats or whatever those little treats are. And I don't want to villainize those either. I want those to be a part of this beautiful landscape of me enjoying life. Is there ways that we can start to shift that a little bit differently and really start to look at it in a way where it's all a win? Absolutely. Yeah. And there's so many aspects to this whole mindset piece. You know, the name Mind Strong comes from two different mindset pieces. One is the education piece to this. And the other is that in so many weight loss techniques and so many different diets, there is this mindset aspect that is missing, right? And the analogy I always like to use is a lottery winner. Like we've all heard the cliche statistics that most lottery winners blow their earnings within the first two years. And the reason is, you know, if you're holding this deep-seated belief that money is the root of all evil or 
having money makes you a greedy, selfish person. Of course, you're going to self-sabotage right back to homeostasis. And the same is true with health and fitness, that for most of us, we have spent so many years digging these deep-rooted beliefs without even realizing it, telling ourselves, I have no self-control, right? I can never stick with the diet. I have no willpower. All these things we take as personal attacks on ourselves, and we take them to be truth with a capital T about us. And one of the things I love about the exercise I was describing of laying out the diets is you start to see, wait a second, this is not me. I am not the problem. The problem is the method I've been using all these years. This method, these diets were not designed to be sustainable. They were designed to keep me reliant on their company. And I never knew how they work. So of course they didn't last when I went off of them, right? I don't know why this shake is making me lose weight. So of course it didn't last. It's not me that lacks willpower. It's the method I've been using. So we need to start there and understand that this is not something that is wrong with us. This is something that's wrong with with the industry, to be completely honest, there's not enough people educating so that you have the skills to do this for life. Mm. And then the other, to, yeah. Go on. the other piece to this puzzle is that the single biggest mindset shift that we need to make, and there's not many things I say we need to do, but we need to do this, whether we're talking about nutrition, about business, about our relationships, is we need to get out of this all in, all out mindset. This idea that I'm either 100% on my diet, I'm either working out six days a week, or I'm housing a whole pizza and binge watching Netflix, right? This goes back to what we were saying before about the pleasure principle. Our bodies want to feel good. So when we take one little step, when we swap out fried chicken for grilled chicken or water instead of soda, when we take one little step, our body goes, wow, that felt really good. What else can I do? What else can I do? And that momentum, gives us the consistency we need. And that consistency leads to habits, which are the basis of everything we are, right? We are our habits. And most of us don't get to the level of habits because we're living our life all in, all out, all in, all out. So when we can start to make the shift of, you know what? I ate that brownie today. I ate that piece of pizza today. I fit into my goals, but I, it didn't feel great. I feel kind of sluggish. I feel kind of tired. So you know what? Tomorrow I'll make a different choice. And then it's right back to it. It's not next Monday. It's not next month. It's the next bite that you take. You're right back to it. There is no more all in, all out. Mm, yes. Love that so much. Exactly. There needs to be so much more flexibility and so much yes. more grace yes. in this process because it's not, it's not just, like you said, restriction or calorie in, calorie out. There's a lot of other components that come into this terrain that we're navigating, especially as we head into the holiday season, you know? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> for sure. And the holidays, I mean, this is a struggle for everyone. And it's pretty funny as a coach, my clients will email me and say, hey, how, in fact, today I, I literally had this conversation today. Someone said, I do something called tracking macros. That's the skill that I teach for nutrition. And they said, how does it work with tracking macros during Thanksgiving? And my go-to copy and paste answer is coaches orders. You are not allowed to track macros on Thanksgiving because there are things in life that are more important than this right now. And the holidays are to spend time with your family and having that mental peace that that means today I'm going to focus on family. It doesn't mean it's an excuse to binge. It doesn't mean I have to get it all in today, but we have that mindset that I can just be and enjoy and be present and then get right back on tomorrow. Today did not mess me up. Today did not mean I have to wait for the new year to start. It means I enjoyed today and I'm right back on tomorrow. Mm. Mm hmm. 100%. Love that philosophy. And does this go along? I know we're talking mostly about food today, but I know that you also help people, you know, with physical activity. It's just the same kind of mindset that we should be having around physical activity. I know I find that women, when we're not getting the results that we want, we tend to over exercise and we tend to overdo it. Kind of like that concept of like over restriction. Any recommendations there as well is we're working out super hard, nothing's moving, the scale isn't moving. Is it that we're doing too much? So with workouts, you're absolutely right. That it's mindset is usually wops us. I teach women to get comfortable lifting weights. That's a big part of the work that I do. Because to me, the analogy I like to use is money in a high interest savings account. We'll pretend those still exist versus a checking account. And what I find is a lot of women, their comfort zone is cardio, right? We'll do an hour and a half, two hours on the treadmill, even if we hate it because that's what we think we need to do. We think it's a necessary evil. But what we actually find is that the way our bodies are designed is the more lean muscle mass we have, the more fired up our metabolism is. 
So that's like that high interest savings account that's working for you, whether you're doing the work or not. Whereas cardio is more like the checking account. Yes, it burns calories, but you have to be actually doing work. So first and foremost, we need to make a mindset shift that lifting weights does not make you bulky, mm-hmm. that the more lean muscle mass you have, the faster your metabolism is going to run. So the easier to lose weight it is. Now, when we get into the logistics of it, it's exactly the same as what you just said. We tend to get in that all in all out mindset, right? I'm either, okay, I'm day one, here's my workout. So I'm going to be in the gym six days a week, come hell or high water, I'm getting this in. And then what happens? Two days in, we're so sore, we can barely move. So now we're out for the next month. And it's the same concept about, I keep coming back to it because this is the basis of all of it. Human psychology is that our bodies want to feel good. So if you're not working out at all right now, committing to two exercises a day, three days a week, that is a fantastic place to start. I don't suggest you jump in at six days a week doing a full hour and a half workout because you're going to be rocked after one day. It's these baby steps that build momentum and that momentum is what leads to habit. Mm. And I 100% agree with you. You know, I do think that (laughs) a lot of us were sold the pipe dream on cardio. And I find that cardio can really rev our stress levels and can rev cortisol levels. I am a huge proponent of lifting weights and a huge proponent of lifting heavy weights. Even (laughs) as we record this, I'm still pregnant. Although when this goes live, I probably won't be anymore, but I'm still working out and I'm still lifting weights every day. Oh, well, it. almost every day, you know, like four to five times a week. And that's really what I'm doing. Like we'll go on walks, but if I'm in the gym, it's not for cardio. It's for lifting weights because I know, especially women in pregnancy, the big concern is gestational diabetes and insulin resistance. And so, and I know that that's a concern for so many women just in general. And if we can have that great muscle mass, we have the ability to regulate our blood sugar levels. We have the ability to store glucose as fuel. I just love the idea. And we are able to have more longevity for longer. So I'm really such a proponent of not only the metabolic resilience that we get from lifting weights, but all of the other great benefits that come when our muscles, which is what I consider to be one of the most important organs of longevity are preserved, especially as we get older. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And all of this for so many women who struggle with weight loss as they get older, you know, your metabolism is such a topic that comes up so much. And it's true. As we get older, things slow down. It sucks, Mm -hmm. but it's life. It's what, you know, it's a truth of our body. And we can train our metabolism to speed up. And we do that through nutrition. And as you're saying, with weight training, it is the biggest win-win for women, especially as we age. It is one of the best things you can be doing for your body, hands down. 100% agree. Yes. Okay. I want to shift the conversation. I'm so glad we brought up working out because I know so there's a lot of misconceptions around training as well and how we should be approaching training. And so I know that this is an area that you walk women through all the time. I wanted to just have you speak into it. But I do want to get back to nutrition for just a second. And one of the things that we're seeing so much right now is the ketogenic diet and really cutting out as many carbs as possible or a very small amount and limited carb. And I get the benefits to some keto. I am definitely not a full proponent of any level of long-term keto or anything like that. And I also think that especially when women are still cycling, that carbs are very, very critical to our hormone production. So speak to me about kind of the demonization of carbs right now (laughs) and why we're misplaced in that. Oh my goodness. If there's one thing in life that I wish I could physically do, it would be to just give carbs a bear hug and apologize for all of humanity. Yes. (laughs) So the way that our body is literally designed, it doesn't matter what you believe in, whether you believe in God or the universe or the big bang, like we are talking about human biology right now. And human biology shows us that the way our bodies are designed is that we literally go to carbs first for energy. When your body needs energy, it looks for carbs first and foremost. So when you go on one of these low carb diets, like the keto diet, what's happening is your body is looking for its first choice, carbs. When it doesn't find it for a prolonged amount of time, then it starts producing ketones, which it burns for energy. And what you're doing, to put it bluntly, is you are tricking your body. You're tricking your body into doing something it was not designed to do. And to me, like I take a step back and I think about what the human body is capable of, right? It can breathe without my conscious thought. It can heal myself when I cut myself. It can keep my heart pumping. 
the reason that we struggle with weight loss is not because we haven't tricked our body enough. <laughs> it's because we haven't learned to fuel it in the right proportions. So we need to understand that not only are carbs not the enemy, carbs are literally our fuel source. So if you're walking around feeling low energy, or especially if you're in the gym and you need that burst of energy, carbs are one of the healthiest things that you can be giving yourself. That's our first starting point. The second point goes back to what we've talked about a lot with mindset already, is that any diet that says you can't eat this, again, you could have the willpower of a Navy SEAL and you might last for quite a few months, but it is not sustainable. And more than not sustainable, what kind of way to go through life is that, right? Do you want to sit there at your child's wedding and be like, I can't eat the cake, I can't eat the cake? Like, what a terrible way to go through life. It is not about... I can't eat this. It's about what proportions of this do I need? How many carbs do I need? How much fat do I need? How much protein do I have? And then making choices. I refer to it a lot like budgeting your money. You make choices of how you want to quote unquote spend what you have each day to fuel your body the way that it was designed. Mm. Yeah. And every woman is different. Every person is different. And so there's going to be, and depending on where you are in your journey seasonally or within your cycle, or maybe you're still childbearing or perimenopause or menopausal, there's a lot of other considerations we have to take into account. And yeah, the one size fits all is just not cutting it. And I think that women are finding frustration. I know my mom had tried, I know of a lot of friends, but my mom is one of my best examples right now. She tried a ketogenic diet, but she's a marathon runner and it just didn't work for her. I was like, no, it's just not going to. And so, you know, navigating that and figuring out, you know, she really was bummed about it. Like her friends who don't run all the time, some had some great success with it in the beginning that they tried it and she wasn't getting the results she wanted. I was like, your body and what you're doing with your body, it's just not, and I'm also not a, you know, I'm not that I don't love marathon running, but I want my mom lifting weights too. Yeah. (laughs) loves running. It's a stress reducer. She's got a little group that she runs with. There's just so many wonderful side benefits to her doing it. So I'm on the train if that's what she loves to do. I just want her to do more lifting. But we have to just, we have to take that into consideration. That's the consideration that changes, you know, whether she can do keto or not. And I really appreciate recognizing, you figuring out that kind of sweet spot for you personally, what is a good proportion of healthy fats? What is a good proportion of great carbs? And what's a great proportion of protein, you know, to create that metabolic resilience that you're looking for? Absolutely. And what you're saying is so important about how it's different for everyone for two reasons. First of all, anytime I have this conversation, there's going to be multiple people who comment and say, I did keto and it worked for me. Yes. And I like to quote the middle school students I used to teach in this part. This is where I say, do you boo-boo? Because the answer is you have to find what works for you. I'm not going to sit here and tell you nobody should do the keto diet. My job as an educator, because that's how I'll always see myself, is to let you know that you don't have to do it that it's not a matter of carbs make you fat, so this is the best approach. It's that, listen, if you love carbs, as most of us do, you can absolutely eat them. But if your answer is, well, Rachel, I love keto, then you should absolutely do keto. I just want people to know that it's not necessary. And Mm -hmm. the other part to this is exactly what you're saying about it not being one size fits all. And this is what drives me nuts when I see, you know, you go on Facebook and you get targeted ads And one of the really popular ones right now are download my free meal plan. And if we step back and think about this logically, you know, if I weighed 300 pounds and you weighed 130 pounds and we both go and download that meal plan, how in the world is that meal plan going to work for both of us, right? This is such a personalized approach and there's so much more information that we need to know how much you should be eating, what proportions you should be eating and what's going to work for you and your body. Mm. 100% agree. And what I want to just shift into really quickly, I know that you have a book coming out, which is so exciting. It is so exciting. (laughs) And I know that it has a lot of this philosophy built in. What can we expect from the book? Are there going to be recipes in here that we can, that are very flexible for us? Talk to me a little bit about what the goal was for this book. Absolutely. So just like your baby is about to come out, this has been my year and a half in the making baby. (laughs) So on November 17th, which by the time this goes live, will probably be out on Amazon. It's called Becoming Mind Strong, The Truth About Health, Fitness, and the BS That's Holding You Back. It's 70% mindset, 30% nutrition. 
So a lot of the book digs into what we were talking about earlier about the biggest mindset shifts that we can make to start locking this in as a sustainable lifestyle. And then it gets into really the nitty gritty of how do you figure out your personal macro plan? With the book, it references the website that goes along with it quite a bit. And that's where you can find things like good sources of protein, recipes, all that stuff is referred back to from the book. But the book is a whole lot of mindset work. There's actionable tools in every chapter. Every chapter ends with a section called put in the work and then just really gets into the basics of how can I start figuring out what nutrition plan is going to work for me. It is chock full of puns because that's just how I naturally talk from my middle school days. And I'm just so excited to get, I truly in my soul believe that this is the book that's missing from the health and fitness world because it's not another do this, don't do this. It's here's how you do this once and for all. Hmm. Perfect. Perfect. I love that it's so much centered around mindset and really shifting the way that we think about all of this. Because I know that's what gets us in so much trouble to begin with. And like you said, it's going to be available on Amazon. We'll have the link. And is there a site? Is there anywhere you want us to go and check you out to learn more? Absolutely. So if you go to mindstrongfitness.com, that's my main website. And then mindstrongfitness.com slash becoming will take you to the book website. Perfect. 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 All right. So we'll have the book. We'll have all the links in there as well to go and check out the book. Rachel, honey, it was in such a pleasure to have you here on the show and to really speak truth into, you know, how we can navigate this with a lot more ease and grace and be more gentle with ourselves. Absolutely. This was so much fun. And I'm really looking forward to trying these sexy brownies one of these days. Now I'm intrigued. (laughs) Sounds good. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you.